Hey, fellow Piapolis of Earth, welcome, welcome, welcome to episode zero of Life Coaching with Ryan, the podcast that explores our humanists and all its you and woohoo. I just wanted to say hi, what's up, notice me, senpai, and give y'all a preview of what's to come. So without further ado, please baste your ear holes in some quick cuts of future episodes. Hope you enjoy. All right. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I have notes because I'm going to need them. I'm going to need them because my brain just emptied. It just completely emptied. Yay! <laughs> so this will be um, this will be an adventure. Yes. Everything is. Yeah. Weird. Okay, transition time <laughs> because uh, we're gonna go down some other rabbit hole and get lost forever, which we would love, but that doesn't serve the purpose that we're trying to meet right now. <laughs> um, actually. Uh, so when uh, I was talking to Aaron, my partner, uh, about what the topic was for today, I said, uh, it's words, words, words. We we're talking about, you know, labels, self-talk mantra. She went, I think there's a quote by Margaret Atwood ah. about that. And uh, the quote is, a word after a word after a word is power. Mm. That's cool. The approach is just do something positive towards whatever a day then you're gonna then you're gonna x out all this other stuff as opposed to like just do something with regards you know what i mean just yeah 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 you know so sure, because i, I agree i don't want to fail like that's the last thing people want to do is it's like oh i'm gonna do this and that's why what keeps people that's like the crippling thing right like i'm right. Stopping, like i'm i'm the, i'm scared of success and you know like i'm this fear of the failure right so right right yeah no i i think that that's a very good clarification uh because for me, I don't consider failure a stopping of momentum. I, right. I don't see... You uh, don't. I don't. No, right, right. Because I think this is good to clarify, because I did not even consider that you would disagree with me. I th figured you were going to refine my statement. So even just in your objection, I think it's really, really valuable, because someone could interpret my use of the word momentum to mean continuous successful attempts to do something yeah. which right. is not not what i mean i mean continual attempts to do something period no problem at all cool let's do this thing let's say let the awkwardness begin <laughs> <laughs> all right so <laughs> did you hear that that was my blood pressure going up <laughs> heart palpitation <laughs> starting right affect kicking in like you said so um topic of the day is the wrongness of death. Uh, I thought of this topic because of a conversation with my guest. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, specifically, that in our culture, there seems to be a disconnect with death. Death is other, death is evil, um, and so we try to keep it at bay. There's a constant fear of mortality that is a component, an underlying component of our media and our daily lives and i think that uh, the conversation that we had uh, was very valuable to me as someone who lives with a fear of mortality in my waking not quite daily life but um but it's there it's present and when i listen for it it's there so i would like to introduce my guest chris i had a close friend that i had this conversation with where i said to him uh, we both had read Ray Kurzweil's book, um, uh, The Singularity is Near, mm -hmm. right? Where the intention is that we will become uh, next human, metahuman, you know, post human. Right. right. And that, that will be either biological genetic manipulation to the point where we live forever or technological, or technological integration, machine human interface, right? right. And. And both of us were like, we got to get off this place. We got to get out of this place, right? Like right. this place being either the earth specifically or whatever. And then I posed a question to him and I said, you want to get out of this place. You want to go somewhere, whether it is a different sense of reality on this earth so that you're not as threatened by the horrible changes that happen or you, we literally launch you out in the stars. And I say, between getting off this planet and losing yourself, which would you prefer? What if I had to? You had to become a collective, or your sense of what made you you, 
Because what if what if we rephrase I that death? In my chest. Right, as soon as you said right, that, right, because like, because because you're like it is the la- it is it is the loss of self that terrifies us. Yeah, really, right. So you're talking about caring for your mom. Did what impact did caring for your mom have on your identity, sense of self, relationship with her? Like, what what was was that in any way transformative having to care for her? That's a really good question. Um, I'm going to answer it in two ways. Cool. Um, I remember when she, I was, I was bathing her and I was trying to help her get out of the shower and she just had a very hard time walking, but she still had like her sense, like she still could talk and she was very, um, and so we had to put her diaper on and my mom's like, who would have thought? that you'd be putting diapers on me, you know, mm-hmm. like she made this like very, because at that point she was already in childlike wonder, like mm-hmm. she could find play. Um, and I remember laughing going, yeah, oh, it's pretty interesting mom, you know, and like that banter. But then I'm going to answer the second way. I always took care of my mom. Mm-hmm. There was, this was just different because it was horrifying to watch her die and to become weaker and not have any control over it. I had no control over it. I didn't know if the next day she was gonna be awake. I didn't, and that's horrifying experience. But the act of taking care of my mom, it was different because it was not just emotional, it was physical now. Um, That was very normal for me. (laughs) So I think the abnormal part was she was gonna die. And that was the only thing that was abnormal about it. And I couldn't ask her to be my mom anymore. Even if she was my mom, like, hey, mom, I'm going to go to Nordstrom. What do you recommend I buy? Like, I still had my mom to call to do those kinds of questions. I still could call my mom to, to sew something for my daughter, like, I still had a mom to call and I was like, oh, this is different because I no longer have a mom. Um, hmm. but, but it wasn't different in terms of me taking care of her. I could rant for a while on that, but let's just step back. When we talk about resistance and grasping, that's what we're talking about. Resisting a negative thought or grasping for a positive thought. That's not centered. That's not present. So when I talk about mantras, when I talk about any type of affirmation and someone says, well, I don't believe that. I'm like, okay, there's a difference between not believing it and lying to yourself. Find something as close to something you believe as possible and practice with that. Don't lie to yourself. Don't tell yourself some bullshit line. Get yourself as close as possible to a truth that you believe in or can believe in, or can borrow the belief in, to work with that. That's gonna get you a long, long way. So that is a fair amount of what I do in my coaching practice. If you wanna know what that feels like, if you wanna know what it feels like to shift your perspective, to shift your frame, to be able to see a different possibility, it starts with reframing your beliefs. It starts with understanding there is another way to look at what you're going through that is equally true, if not more true, that will help you through that circumstance. So finding a mantra, finding self-talk that works for you, that's believable to you, that is separate from the negative self-talk you currently have, key, key, super duper, a number one important in how you progress in your personal practice. I will definitely be talking more about resistance and grasping. I'm definitely going to be talking more about perspective. I'm definitely going to be talking more about self-fulfilling prophecies uh, as we continue in this podcast together. It might show up in very subtle ways. It might show up in very obvious ways. But my personal belief is that this is at the core of all self-work. Finding out how you can be with yourself, finding out how you can be with yourself when interacting with others, because wherever you go, there you are. It doesn't matter who you're talking to. It doesn't matter what the circumstance, you are still there. And if you find things in your life repeating, you might consider it's because you are in that circumstance. 
With that, I look forward to coming at you Tuesdays starting August 7th. Check out my site, lifecoachingwithryan.com, for past blogs and co-releases with upcoming episodes. And if you want to contribute to what I do, jump over to patreon.com slash lifecoachingwithryan. Hit me up on my socials and talk with you soon. Bye.